David McKeown. <laughs> Veteran, one other pride club. Um, <laughs> So yeah, my name's David, and I lecture in Dynamics uh, in UCD. And uh, Dynamics is all about uh, how things move, uh, and the stuff that I move is usually around in space, so there's space applications, and usually that's called astrodynamics. But it's pretty much the same as dynamics. The only difference between astrodynamics and normal dynamics is that I do all my calculations while standing on an artificial grass pitch. <laughs> Got there. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I, I'm going to talk about reference frames. Reference frames are a very fundamental thing of, of uh, dynamics. It's where you measure things from. Um, so for example, uh, if a car is going at 50 kilometers per hour, and then you throw, this is maths, right? If you throw a ball out at 20 kilometers per hour, from the car, where you are, you'll see the ball travel away at 20 kilometers per hour. Now if you're on the side of the road, looking at that happen, you'll think, that guy is a littering scumbag. <laughs> at 70 kilometers per hour. You'll see the two speeds added together. So you get two different numbers for the same thing as happening. So it's really important is your reference frame, where you measure things from. Right. So, <laughs> it's going okay. Um, so um, this is my second uh, Bright Club talk. So I used, I used all my jokes in the first Bright Club talk. So there's, there's no more jokes, right? So what, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to tell a story about a train journey I was on. And then in the middle, I'll have a bit about how planes fly, and it'll really un interrupt the flow of the story, but it will fulfill the quota of science required for Science Foundation Ireland funding. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the story is actually based back in 1997. It's when uh, Good Will Hunting uh, was in the cinema, and I really enjoyed Good Will Hunting because I always wanted to be a wrong side of the tracks mathematical genius. <laughs> And my parents ruined that for me by giving me a solid home and access to a conventional education. <laughs> and I'm bitter. I'm still bitter, but I was happy then because I didn't know that was going to happen. And I was on a train and I was going to Galway. <laughs> I had a cup of tea and a Kit Kat. The man across from me, he had an apple and a can of Vilt, which is a terrible combination. <laughs> now, he was a middle-aged man. He had unbrushed Irish hair. He had a pair of glasses, which were too small for his eyebrows. <laughs> and he had a denim shirt that was open three buttons down, which revealed white tufts of hair, which he had grown, or groomed, to look like a singular piece of cauliflower. <laughs> now, he had, he had these kind of a pile of scripts on the top of it, the book Soundings, which was the English poetry book at the time. So I thought, he must be an English teacher, or he must be trying very hard to look like an English teacher. <laughs> I was thinking, why would someone look, try so hard to look like an English teacher when his hand came across the table and took my Kit Kat? Okay. And he took it and he unput the paper foil, uh, or the paper and then the foil, and he put it in his mouth and he ate across three fingers of the Kit Kat. <laughs> like a sociopath would eat <laughs> a stolen Kit Kat. All right? So I looked at him and he just looked at me and he took a sip of his lilt. Terrible. And uh, it was a very tense time. There's a real, I, I didn't know what to do. It was a real fight or flight situation where you, um, where you, you either stand up for yourself or you, or you flee. And that is how airplanes fly. <laughs> um, as, as, as you know, airplanes are uh, they're, they're made of metal, which is heavier than air, so they can't float. So you'll notice that if you, if you look at the window just before the uh, <laughs> plane takes off, the captain will be just whispering into the ears of the plane something a little bit shocking, uh, something like, uh, just get it spooked a little bit, something like, oh, so uh, uh, man-made carbon, uh, or man-made climate change has is, is, is gone past the point of no return, and then the plane gets all spooked and takes off, because uh, it doesn't understand irony at all. <laughs> So that was, the, that was the science bit in the middle. <laughs> Back to the story. So this man had taken, taken my Kit Kat and taken a, a bunch of it. So I thought I was gonna, I was gonna fight. I, I stood up and uh, I reached across and I took his apple and I rolled it down the middle of the train. And I felt like I needed to say something and I panicked and I said, do you like apples? <laughs> well, how do you like damn apples, all right? And 
don't know where I got it from. But I, he, <laughs> he, uh, I, I, at that stage, I thought the train would like kind of uh, start applauding because this teenage boy had stood up against this Kit Kat eating maniac. But, but they hadn't seen that bit. They, they had just seen a boy stand up and go, throw an apple down and go, do you like apples? <laughs> How do you like damn apples? So they were thinking, Apple advertising has got quite aggressive. <laughs> Do you remember when you just go to a shop and, and buy an apple? Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore. What happens is a teenage boy would throw you an apple and ask for instant feedback. <laughs> Did he look like a wrong side of the tracks mathematical genius? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> He'll go to college through the CAO. Um, so, um, there was a bit of tension then. I looked at him, he looked at me. He looked a bit confused. And I can think of two reasons why he looked confused. One, do you like apples? How do you like them apples? That's terrible grammar. It should be that apple, right? <laughs> Secondly, he's an English teacher. Secondly, <laughs> that's clearly a rhetorical question. And if anybody knows not to answer a rhetorical question, he's a leading cert English teacher. <laughs> right. So. He looked like he was going to say something, so I just went, ah, and I walked away. I walked down after the apple, people going, very good apples, thanks, thanks. they were very nice apples. <laughs> um, and I kept going, I walked through uh, that carriage, and I walked through the next carriage in case he was following me, and I got uh, to the final carriage, and I sat down, and my heart was racing, and I was sweating, and I reached uh, into my bag to get a bottle of water, and on top of my bag was an unopened Kit Kat. Now, from my reference frame, <laughs> that story makes sense. I'm a complete idiot. <laughs> from his reference frame, that story makes sense. I'm a psychopath. <laughs> and they're joined together by an unopened Kit Kat. Thanks very much.